I'm really excited that we have this opportunity to host a satellite exhibition being sponsored by Art for Guernsey at the same time as the exhibition of the Renoir that's recently come back to Guernsey that's happening up at Beau Séjour. It's a phenomenal project because Art for Guernsey, through lockdown as they were planning this, uh, thought about using that exhibition to help people re-engage with society and then realised that perhaps those who struggled most to re-engage would be those with disabilities. And so the whole first day of the Renoir exhibition is devoted to making access for people with various disabilities. I made a bracelet and I did a butterfly, uh, a, uh, not a butterfly, what was it? Bumblebee. Bumblebee. And it was a, made out of a card. I think it was cool. <laughs> I never did it. I never, I never did that before. We got a tiger. Um, we had to pick what animal we liked. I liked the owl, I did, because it's nice, nice colours. He's br smart, good, good eyes, nice eyes. I, I helped create two pieces with Jill Herschel. It took about three weeks to, to create it. Like jungle and with pockets and you could put anything you want in the pockets. Scissors, scissors, paper, whatever. Something to do with my hands. Because if I've got nothing to do with my hands, then they're in my belt all the time. And it's not very nice being in the belt all the time. So if I've got something to do with my hands, then it's, it's a lot easier. I've been waiting here at the Ron Short Centre for about two years to host some kind of exhibition. Having stripped the walls and finally having them painted and having the lighting put in, it seems silly just to put the whole place back together without using the space. Suddenly those kind of two things came together when uh, community services from HSC, their outreach service, got in touch and said, oh, we've been doing some work during lockdown with um, people who've been uh, shut in, people who don't normally get out, kind of art therapy, and we wanted to have a small exhibition to try and encourage them and, and to have a little reception. And I thought, well, wouldn't that tie in with what we want to do here at the Ron Short Centre? On a daily basis, we have up to 28 service users that all get supported in their own homes to maintain their independence. Um, and we have a staff team of 12 who go out and support them in activities of daily living. So that could be attending doctor's appointments, personal care, doing some shopping, banking. So mainly due to lockdown, um, it was something that was created out of that. Um, you know, everyone's lives got turned upside down. In that time, we could no longer go out and engage in community activities like what we were used to doing. So we tried to think of a way that we could incorporate some meaningful activities into service users' everyday lives at home, keeping them safe, away from the risk of infection. You know, I've tried to pass on my arts and crafts skills to all the service users I work with. So during lockdown, I decided to produce an activity pack each week for everybody. The same, the same activity pack went out to all of them, and it was lovely to see all the different variations that came back using the same kit. We worked with a zero budget, and I managed to use all my arts and crafts supplies from home. We did a lot of recycled um, crafts using empty toilet rolls, empty pop bottles, and everybody was really excited about it and couldn't wait for the next pack to come out each week. It's been a good success, and at the end of it, we have managed to um, organize arts and crafts sessions three times a week where different service users drop in to indulge in their hobby um, and learn to do new things, really. Viv had umpteen VHS boxes in her loft and she managed to create tissue boxes out of that. So it was something quite useful that service users could have in their home that looked quite pretty and were quite functional as well. And it was amazing to see how much excitement that was built up around this in a very difficult time. And, you know, all the hidden talents that we found and the sense of pride when everybody had achieved something. It was my idea really, it wasn't Viv's idea, it was really mine. So she gave me all of these from her book every, every year. It's like a couple of these, a couple of those. I'm not telling you how much um, I'm on, how many in this book, there's 200 I think. I got a table with this stuff on it. Every time I finish one book, she gives me some more. 
and she says she's going to give me some morphs over the Did weekend. And over the weekend, she says she's going to give me another lot. So it's our idea to do something like that. It keeps me out of misery. I've got nowhere to go. Some days I found it quite hard. And basically, when, like, when people could wear the mask off, I got to still wear mine on because I had to wait for two months for me to like, go for a walk. But like, I had to wait till night time because I was shielding. And, and in that time when I was shielding, I made some like desserts. Uh, I did some collage of food and that, and uh, food made homemade clay. And what I did, I, I wrote keep safe, and it's in gold. Art is like, it's just best how you feeling and that, because like, when Viv comes, she says, oh, how do you feel? And I say like, something, let me draw it out or let me show you how I feel. So it's a good way of art, oh, it's showing how you, how you feel. So if you feel happy, do like a happy picture. We did some air dried clay, which I made out of corn flour, PVA glue and baby oil. Got in a right sticky mess making that and the service users loved it. Made some little clay items and painted them, which are going to be in the exhibition. We've got a few sort of collage posters that they've used old magazines. Those who were inter like there's one who was interested in cars. He cut out pictures of just cars and stuck them on. And they, they are really superb. They spent a lot of time gluing and sticking and really, you know, they've come out really good. With the lockdown, we had um, split into three different teams, um, one based around town area, one based up St Martin's area, the other one based at the Vale end of the island. I was based in the town area with quite a few of the guys. Our activities act or coordinator kept sending stuff down every week for everybody. We've never done anything like this before, that's the problem. Um, so this is a, a, a first. Hopefully our coordinator will set a few more up. She's got her weekly sessions running, so with a bit of luck they'll learn cooking, one's, one's doing dressmaking. Christmas is coming so there'll be Christmas fair. With a bit of luck we make, might make some mini Christmas cakes, all sorts of things, table decorations, baubles. I think it's been rewarding for them because they can actually see something at the end of it that they've done themselves and it's, you know, a big achievement for them that maybe they've not really tried to do before. But because they had so much time on their hands and couldn't go out, they all really enjoyed, you know, that activity time. So yeah, it's been rewarding for all of us and it's been great for me to see what they've produced and it encourages me to do even more. I think seeing how resilient our whole team were through a really uncertain time for us, I mean, business had to continue as usual. We didn't have the luxury of staying away um, and isolating at home away from any of the threat. But to see how positive our whole team was in that time, staff and service users, and they liked to take pictures of their artwork and show some of the wider team. So it really kept us as a whole team throughout, even though we did have to split up into smaller teams to minimise that risk of infection. So it was great. All of the works that are gathered here have come from people who have been struggling one way or another, um, either because of a disability or um, just on account of, of lockdown and the social isolation it created. So the works of art uh, extend from very simple things done by people with very severe autism um, up to some amazing uh, creative work. And I don't want to give all of the show away, but it's been really exciting to meet people with um, various physical handicaps, uh, someone with quite advanced cerebral palsy who uh, finger paints if someone holds their, their elbow has produced some amazingly good work. And, and all of these, some of the art is just quite moving actually. And, and the stories and the role that art has played in helping people build a, a better life to engage with community, to engage with other peoples. I think it's going to be really potentially quite powerful to come through and particularly because the exhibition will happen while the Ron Short Centre is still open as a working space so, so people will be kind of file around but, but the main activities that go on here will still I hope be, be going on so it gives us a chance to highlight how we, we 
build accessibility, how we knock down barriers. Our title is essentially Ron Short Centre and Inclusive Members Club. And that's what it's all about, just saying these barriers don't matter, we're all human together. Very close friend of mine, she sent a, uh, a uh, adult colouring book and I, th I thought she was joking at first, but I started doing that, to the adult colouring book, then it went on to my drawings, and then I got my mental health, took a, a dive, then I started drawing, and then it just helped me like, you know, helped me through the, the bad times. I still have problems now, but yeah, it's really helped me, and. I would never have thought of me doing this, like, you know, but I can sit down and, you know, zone out, do my art, and uh, for hours and hours and hours, I stay up sometimes at about four o'clock in the morning, because the time flies so fast. Art has the power to move, but I think also, uh, to recognise that, that sometimes we put false limits in place. We thought that you had to train for a thousand years to make something beautiful. Actually, everybody has a creative spark in there and it's, it's about accessing it. And also to see just how easy it is uh, using art to bring the community together, to create friendships, to create social bonds uh, and, and to create joy. I don't know many of the artists but it's really exciting to see the art and see the um, endeavour and passion coming through. I know that Rob has mentioned the beauty, but actually what has struck me is that I can see the endeavour within the work and I like seeing beauty within the way that the pieces have been put together and the thought processes and the fact that it is uniquely creative and unique to that individual that's made it just that even the little um, decisions that have been made demonstrates to me that there's been um, autonomy and agency and thought processes that in parallel with real life situations outside of creativity art is like a, a sort of safe way to practice real life situations and I don't think um, people always understand that. To make a brave step when you're creating a piece of artwork I think, and I've noticed subliminally, helps that individual take a brave step somewhere else in their lives and I think that's really empowering. I'm at home and I'm sit sitting on my couch like, just watching TV and then I think about the drawing I'm doing and this, this goes up me like, you know, so yeah, it's true, it's, it's just brilliant. I never felt like this about anything in my life. I'm really looking forward to the public um, to come and have a look at this work. Some of it will not necessarily um, be linked visually, but I think that what you'll get from seeing the exhibition is that each individual has something to say and has something to demonstrate about their ability. I hope that the public will see from also the narratives that are going to accompany the pieces that instead of an individual or one of the artists identifying as somebody with a problem or a disability, they are creating a new identity as an artist and as a creator and someone that has something to give to the community. And I did hand-drawn sketches and also I do some jewel making. Use the technique with pencil first and then start the line art with ink and then complete it with colour and that's just it. Ben um, has always loved art and he, it's one of his, the things he, he loved at college. This is Ben's artwork. Ben loves to do these drawings. Um, he, he's dr from being very young he's drawn endlessly so his draftsmanship skills as you see are really quite excellent now has tried various things like pastels and paint, but he loves to use pens, inks, and color, coloring pencils because it's a, it's a, um, it's a non-messy technique. He, he doesn't like the sensory issues of, of paint and clay and all of those things. He'll, he'll have a go, but he, his preferred choice is to, to draw, and he'll spend two, three hours a day at least working in his little studio in our attic. We've done some courses with um, silver clay. We've been to England to do this 
And these are some of these very early examples of things that he's done with silver clay. And it's a really nice medium to work with, but it is a little bit messy, so he has to constantly go off and wash his hands. These beautiful bracelets, he made these for me in last autumn, and that was with the um, silversmithing course at the College of FE, Adult Education, and I wear these. It's a motivator, he, 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 he's producing something and he, he needs to do this. It's, it's, it, you know, and if, you, if, you do, if, he's, if he's busy, you, know, if you, you call him down, you know, uh, you know put some, I've got some croissants on Ben, do you want, do you want to come down for a coffee? Um, I'll, I'll be, I'll, in, in a while, I'm busy, you can't, you know, he, he doesn't want to be distracted, he wants to, he wants to do it and he'll spend hours up there. So it, it's just, it's just an essential part of his life, but he, 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 he needs to do this. I've done art since I was old enough to pick up a pencil, which was, you know, obviously about 18 months, I think. And, um, you know, it's always been a very cathartic kind of process for me, um, because, you know, when I'm painting or drawing, um, I just kind of lose myself and everything. And um, yeah, I moved back to Guernsey two years ago, and I was living in London prior to that. Being back in Guernsey, I've really pushed forward how important art is for people's mental health. And I now work with recovery and well-being, and um, I teach art classes there. And you know, it's just amazing to see the joy that people get from creating art. And the amount of people that say to me, "Oh no, you know, I, I can't do art. I'm no good at that." And then when they actually get a paintbrush or get a pencil in their hand and do something, they can be surprised and actually like, yeah, I'm pleased with this and, you know, it's totally taken them out of themselves, so. Creativity is innate in everyone. It's as important to each individual as um, exercise, um, connecting with another. Connecting with your creativity is, is extremely important and to not access it means that somebody's not accessing a part of themselves that's vitally important. So I'm excited to be involved because I know the value that art can bring to an individual and that creativity can bring to an individual. Well, this was a piece that I actually did when I was living in London and unfortunately it was uh, just after I'd lost my dad. So it was, um, you know, I was going through a very difficult time mentally and um, I was trying, I was putting too much pressure on myself and doing lots of different paintings and I was just I wasn't pleased with how it looked and so basically I decided to keep the face <laughs> which is actually my face and then I used this image that was from my friend's hen party um, a, a year before and um, when we you know when you're at a hen party you're holding up different props and everything um, but I thought that that was quite um, a good metaphor for when you know you're you're grieving you're feeling sad and then you have to put on a, a face to like everybody else um, especially um, in London I felt you know a bit isolated painted over the rest of it and um, yeah I thought it was it worked because um, I was going to a lot of different art galleries in London and they were very contemporary and um, you know it's it's nice to see something totally different to what I was used to doing with my portraits I'm really pleased that I was able to get involved with this um, exhibition here because you know, I know that it's been ongoing for a while and um, there are people involved who art does really help them and um, especially with their mental health. And, you know, I know that art's helped my mental health and, you know, I would like to just, you know, encourage anybody that's listening or watching or doing both <laughs> um, just to, you know, to fight the fear and do it anyway you know if you if you think oh no I'm no good at that but you know if as soon as you've got a paintbrush or a pencil just get into it and like I say to um, when I'm doing the classes I'm like any mark is is a good mark because you've started something and then it can just go.